Welcome back to Discovering Geometry with Mrs. Barry. This is lesson 43. We are beginning chapter seven. And in chapter seven, we're gonna talk all about transformations. In this lesson, we'll learn what a transformation is. We'll learn about the three types of transformations, including translation, rotation, and reflection. And then lastly, we'll talk about symmetry. So what is transformation? We're taking a geometric figure and we're going to move all of the points of that figure according to certain rules. And then we will create an image of the original figure. This is called a transformation. Each point on the new figure will correspond to a point from the original figure. The image of point A after a transformation is called a prime. And we write it with this, like an apostrophe next to the A and we call it a prime. B would turn into B prime, et cetera. If the image is congruent to the original, we call it a rigid transformation or isometry. If the transformation does not preserve the size or shape, we call it a non-rigid transformation. So here's a picture of a rigid transformation. This trapezoid just slid over and it's still the same size and the same shape. It's isometry. This would be a non-rigid transformation. This little arrow slid over here, but it became a big arrow, so it changed size. So an enlargement or a reduction in size or even a shape change would be a non-rigid transformation. There are three types of rigid transformations. First, we have a translation, which is a slide or a glide a rotation, which is a turn, or a reflection, which is a flip. So here's a translation. We have the pre-image is what we can call it, or the original figure, and we're going to slide or move the object, and only the location of the object will change. This is called isometry. It's called a glide or a slide. So here, that pre-image moved up here to this image, we have this L pre-image and it's gonna slide over here to make this image. So a slide or a glide is a translation. A translation is our simplest transformation. In our With our patty paper, we could model a translation by tracing a figure and then sliding it along a straight path. Make sure that when you slide it, you are not turning it at all. All points will move along a parallel path to form the image. So you'll have multiple parallel paths to form the image. The distance that each point moves is called the distance of the translation. We must also describe the direction of the translation. So we might use a translation vector. Do you remember when we studied vectors? They have magnitude and direction. We can use a translation vector to describe the motion of the translation. So here this shell, see it doesn't even have to be a polygon, it could be any kind of image. This shell is translating to this blue, blue one. So it slid over to the side. We can see this arrow is our translation vector. It shows the direction and it shows how far. We can translate with patty paper if we were to put a piece of patty paper on top and trace the original image and then slide that patty paper over, we would have a translation. Our next type of transformation is rotation. Rotation is when all the points in the original figure rotate or turn. They will all turn an identical number of degrees about a fixed center point. That center point can be on the image or it can be off of that original figure. You will define a rotation by its center point and degrees of rotation. You're gonna note if you're turning it clockwise or counterclockwise. If a direction is not given, we will always assume that it's counterclockwise. We can model a rotation 
by tracing over a figure and then putting our pencil point on a point on the patty paper and rotating that patty paper about a point. So let's look at a picture of that. Here we have a sailboat. See the center of rotation is not on the figure at all. Um, and then we draw our angle of rotation and then we're going to take that spot on our image and we're going to rotate it. So we're going to move it to that other side of the angle and then we will redraw that image. Or if we have it traced on patty paper, we can just turn that patty paper about the center of rotation. The next translation we have is reflection. Flipping a figure across a line of reflection. So like you're looking in a mirror, it's creating a mirror image. Every point on the image is the same distance from the line of reflection at its corresponding point on the pre-image. A reflection is an isometry. It's going to be the same size and same shape. The distance, the angle measure, and the area of that polygon are preserved because it's the same size and shape. So here is our pre-image or our original figure. Here we have a line of reflection and what's going to happen? We're going to flip that heart over the line of reflection to create our image. We do the same thing with this polygon. Flip it over the line of reflection. And you can see one way that we could do it if we don't have patty paper or we don't have a mirror is to trace from one point in the figure to the line of reflection and then make that same distance across the line of reflection to put the next point. And then we can make the image. A reflection is a transformation that produces a mirror image of the original. We could take our original figure and place your paper against a mirror to see the reflection. The line where the mirror is placed is our line of reflection. When reflecting, you only need the original figure and where the line of the reflection is to create an image. You can model this on patty paper by drawing a figure and then folding it on the line of reflection and drawing a new image. Here, the line of reflection is in the middle of the figure. And you can see that because we have the figures, the figure and the image overlapping. So let's study the basic property of reflection. We're going to draw a polygon, and then we're going to draw a line of reflection next to it. Fold your patty paper along that line to create a reflected image by tracing it. Then we're going to unfold it, and we're going to draw segments connecting each vertex on the original figure with its image point. And what are we going to notice about that? So here we're starting with a polygon. And we have our line of reflection. It's like a pink or a red color. So we're going to fold on that line of reflection, and you're going to be able to see your figure underneath, trace it. I used a ruler to keep my line straight so my figure looks exactly the same. Then I'm going to unfold it. And now I'm going to use my ruler to draw from the vertex on the original figure to the vertex on the image. What do we see there? All of those lines are perpendicular with my reflection line. So the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of every segment joining a point in the original figure with the point in its image. So we're forming perpendicular bisectors um, across the line of reflection. Let's talk about symmetry. Symmetry is a type of symmetry. There is another type of symmetry called reflectional symmetry. This is what we normally think about when we talk about have a shape or a figure having symmetry. It's where one half of the reflection, one half is the reflection of the other half. So if you fold the image, both halves would match. In nature, we often think of a butterfly. So a butterfly has reflectional symmetry. If we fold that butterfly in half or we look, the left side looks the same as the right side. 
humans also have a, a fair amount of reflectional symmetry. Your left arm and hand look like your right arm and hand. The left side of your face usually looks like the right side of your face. The line of symmetry is the reflection line. The butterfly has one line of reflectional symmetry. But if we look at this triangle, it has three lines. We can cut it down this vertex and it's symmetrical. We could cut it across this vertex and this side and this side would be symmetrical or we could cut it across the other vertex and we would have two symmetrical sides. There's another type of symmetry called rotational symmetry. If a figure can be rotated about a point in such a way that its rotated image coincides with the original figure before you go a complete 360, then the figure is said to have rotational symmetry. So that star, we could rotate it just a little bit from here to here, we could rotate it and it would have, it would look the same. So it has rotational symmetry. If you look on the butterfly, as we rotate it, it does not look the same until we get all the way back to the beginning. So the butterfly does not have rotational symmetry. When we talk about rotational symmetry, we can talk about how, how many times it has symmetry. So this star, we could rotate it five times before getting back to the original. So it has a five-fold rotational symmetry. We can rotate it again five times, and then it will be back to the original. Some polygons have no symmetry, or only one kind of symmetry. However, regular polygons are, are symmetric in multiple ways. A square has fourfold ro reflectional symmetry and fourfold rotational symmetry. So fourfold meaning there's four ways that it has reflectional symmetry, up and down, across, or across its diagonals. On the fourfold rotational symmetry, if you mark a certain corner, you can rotate um, that image one time to this corner, two times, three times, before the fourth time is back to the original. 